about to get on the scale. I'm up two pounds. God, it don't make no damn sense, man. Bro, you live with me, man. You see what I'm doing. Okay, what's everything I've been doing? Work out every day. Remove sugar, vegan, and keto. Cardio within the fat burning range. Remove coffee, meditation, lifted weights, blood tests, DNA tests. I'm at a calorie deficit. Taking all the vitamins and supplements instructed by the human biologist. Let's see how my sleep was last night. We're at 91, that's the highest I've ever been. Let's pray this works. It's not the week I thought I was gonna have. I am tired of gaining. Meticulously count every goddamn calorie that goes into your mouth. Everything. You know, you look an ass. I want you to fucking count it, bro. What's up, guys? Derek, moreplaysmartaids.com. Today we're going to be talking about Charlie Rocket. This is a um, very motivating, I don't really know exactly what to classify him as, but he is a very charitable individual who is very motivating and uplifting for tens of thousands of people and he was on uh, i first saw him on the impulsive podcast and um he's definitely inspired a lot of people to you know be more positive um and follow their dreams um he's also been able to change a lot of people's lives in a very very positive manner but one thing we're going to be talking about is his weight loss journey and some of the bold claims being made by some of the doctors that he is deferring to for his nutritional and lifestyle change information and it is pretty wild so he used to look like this as you can see here it's kind of a uh i don't know i guess i'm not gonna be able to zoom in on it because it's just his profile picture but um there was some where's another example um but but uh, like his he's drastically changed in body composition over the years um, and more recently, he's had a very, very tough time losing weight. So he, you can see here kind of a, I don't know, development, longitudinal data, essentially tracking his uh, weight loss. And this is actually, I assume, one of his leanest, as you can see here on the right hand side, he has like a visible jawline, pretty lean, like you wouldn't even think this is the same guy. But when you go to the tags, it's indeed him. Right now, he looks closer to this. This is where we're starting. We're up 50 pounds. That's pretty embarrassing when you were in the biggest Nike commercial of all time. I still have that suit. That was two chains of wedding. That's where we need to be by the end of this. I'm going to get back to my dream. I got to remind myself, like, who am I? Like, I'm an athlete. My goal is to get to 200 pounds, and I only have 20 weeks. We're talking about a pound a week? The root of this story is I always put these responsibilities before my dream. Okay, so a big motivational video there, losing a pound a week. You know, is that an ideal amount of weight to lose? Like obviously in his, at his level of body composition, use, losing weight that quick, like I don't see it as that problematic. Like you're looking at a 500 calorie deficit a day, which equates to 3,500 calories a week, which is a, as far as I remember, this is some like old nutritional information, but 3,500 calories, I believe is a pound of fat. So roughly if you're losing a pound a week, it's a 3,500 calorie deficit, which is really feasible. I think just having a 500 calorie deficit is not like dangerously detrimental for performance, for uh, hormone production, for um, just overall sustainability. It's like reasonable. It's like at the high end of aggressive, I think, but you know, it's, you know, reason I actually maybe not even, I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to quantify that based on, uh, you know, his lifestyle circumstances and whatnot, but like a pound a week, it's not as crazy as like, it's not a fucking wild deficit, like 500 calories. Like most of us are pretty familiar with a, you know, 3,500 per week deficit. It's not that crazy. So anyways, he starts, uh, you know, on his journey from November, here he is with a, the update after that, and this is November 22nd. I'm trying hard and I'm eating this nasty ass healthy food. That's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over, but not getting results. But if I can go a month and not lose any weight, could I go 20 weeks? You did the 75 hard, didn't lose any weight. Fight Camp Thailand, didn't really lose any weight. We did an Ironman in New Zealand, fight across America. You watched me gain 40 pounds in the midst of running three marathons. The biggest peace of mind I could ever have is to just know 
what the root problem I have is. So when he says all those statements, it makes it seem like everything's stacked up against them and like things are, you've done all of this and yet you're still gaining weight. We're not losing it, but it's not addressing the root of the issue because at the end of the day, you know how fucking easy it is to eat an extra few hundred calories and like ruin your deficit for the day. Like you get on the elliptical or the treadmill or whatever. How many calories do you actually burn in that session? Like a fucking few hundred, dude? Not that significant. How easy is it to eat a Nature Valley bar that's like, what, a couple hundred calories? Pretty fucking easy, dude. It takes like two seconds. So like imagine the disparity in energy expenditure relative to intake to offset you deviating from the plan. So again, am I saying he's deviating from the plan? No, I think it's just pretty obvious the plan that was designed for him was subpar or he's lying about what he's doing. I think it's probably the former though. I think he is probably on a plan that somebody counted the calories wrong or he's cheating on the diet. I'm sure he's doing the work. The guy does not seem to be lacking in the putting in the work category, but it's pretty easy to offset your putting in the work when somebody has random fucking oils on your foods that are not accounted for, when you have random sauces that are way more calorie dense than you otherwise anticipated, when you don't realize that what you're Eating is way more calorie dense than otherwise you calculated it to be. And these minor fuck ups in calculating can ultimately wipe out that entire 500 calorie deficit pretty damn easily, dude. Like I remember when I used to have salads back in the day and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't losing weight. And little did I, <laughs> I didn't even think to count the fucking Caesar dressing. I just assumed, oh, you know, it's probably like a couple hundred calories maybe. No, when I was having this massive salad to actually like cover it fully in Caesar dressing, I was, I might as well have been eating fucking cheeseburgers, bro. Like that's how bad it was. And I didn't realize it at the time, like weighing out everything, bro. Literally everything that enters your mouth needs to be weighed if you are in a circumstance like this. So we keep going and he continues to, you know, do good things for people and be inspirational, but he's still struggling with his weight loss. You get closer to here. Here we go. He was 229 back in November. Big here we are. Back. We're on 10 weeks of game. He is 10 weeks into this. In a way. I'm up six pounds. We've done high intensity boxing. We've done runs. We've done walks. We've done diets. I've gotten rid of sugar. I've gotten rid of carbohydrates. It's time to stop shooting in the dark. Been gaining weight my whole life. I've been fighting this since I was on my first diet at age eight. Let's get scientific. Cause I am tired of gaining. What does my blood work say? What are my problems? What does my DNA say? You're actually not fat. You're full of water. What are my food sensitivity? Dude. You're insulin resistant. I am pre-diabetic. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. With insulin rise, you cannot burn fat. Calories in versus calories out means nothing. Quite a bit of genetic stuff going on here, I hate to tell you. I got four bad genes. As soon as we get that number to start dropping, the weight will fall off. I was dealt a bad hand. I think we found the answer. Big Sexy's back. Okay, so like all of that, you know, they're basically overcomplicating the fuck out of it from. If you get a hormonal baseline that shows you're deficient severely in testosterone, your hypogonadal or your thyroid is so dysfunctional, your hypothyroid, these all affect your body composition, ability to nutri partition nutrients, ability to build muscle, retain it, burn fat. Yes, this is all the calories in, calories out equation still at the end of the day though. And ultimately overeating is the main problem here more than likely. I'm assuming this guy is, you know, borderline type two diabetic, the body composition, the eating habits, all of this, like sure, your bad hand that you're dealt, a lot of it could be, you know, number of fat cells, ghrelin, uh, leptin interactions with your brain and hunger and satiety signaling. These are all going to be unfortunately like suboptimal for certain individuals that leads them to overeat. Like there's a reason why certain people are like morbidly obese. Like there is such a thing as even like leptin resistance. It's crazy. But again, ultimately this is not following the plan at the end of the day. And maybe if you found that out that you were hypogonadal and simultaneously like hypothyroid, like still, if you were in a deficit, like sure, you might end up like skinny fat, but you would, you are going to lose weight unless you are like, like fucking dying, dude. Quick side tangent to bring you a note from one of our most long-standing prevalent sponsors on the channel. This is Magic Spoon Macro and Protein Friendly Cereal. The reason why this stuff is so good is because of the high protein content, zero sugar content. So again, above and beyond it being macro friendly, whereas normally when you satisfy your sweet tooth with 
sugar dense, fat dense shit, you end up with no protein. You have a bunch of sugar and you end up with a bunch of inflammation where you have major brain fog. And then you still have to eat like plain chicken breast or like whey protein shakes on top of it just to hit your protein content, inflating your calorie allotment for the day even higher than otherwise was already probably. You're already pushing a calorie surplus way too aggressively with the shitty cereal. And then above and beyond that, to hit your protein needs, you have to eat even more like clean food because you are getting nothing out of it. This stuff Two birds, one stone. Tastes as good as many of your favorite cereals you'd have as a kid. Like for example, they're uh, fruity. As good as the Loops, bro. Pretty much an identical replacement in my opinion. But the calorie content, the sugar content is non-existent. Protein, uh, high protein cereal. I'll get into the actual macro breakdown in a sec. But ultimately for me, this kind of satisfies my sweet tooth. Um, on cheat days especially, this is a game changer in my opinion. Um, and this is something I used to literally drive over the bar. When I went to LabCorp to get my blood work done, I would pick anything I could order in my PO box while I was there that I deemed to be worthwhile for the trip over. I would go to Blaine, Washington over the border and I would pick up Magic Spoon on each trip to get my blood work done. The reason I was going over there is because Canada sucks for blood work. Another story for another time. But anyways, I used to buy this stuff, ship it there, and now they ship to Canada actually, notably as well as the UK. Whereas they did not used to have a feasible option for that, and now they do. So you no longer need to drive over the border to get your cereal. Thank God. So, <laughs> so I have been thankful enough to have this shipped here in Canada for a while now. Um, this is something, like I said, I used to drive over to get, and it has an array of different flavors. But ultimately, the main reason why it's so good in the breakdown is it has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Only about 140 calories per serving, depending on the flavor. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. In addition to that, they're keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. Um, and for me, again, satisfies the sweet tooth. In addition, whilst concurrently doing that and being calorie-friendly, there's no sugar, so I don't get the brain fog and the inflammation from it, which is a big detriment to any cheat meal or cheat day. Typically, I will be like incapacitated with brain fog for numerous hours whereby my work quality goes to shit. Do not get that with this. And you hit your protein needs simultaneously. So for me, it's like a triple threat. Whereas otherwise, cereal is not even something I could implement into my diet without totally fucking my productivity, to be honest. So this is something I highly value. I've been having it as a go-to cheat for years at this point. And um, if you wanna check it out, there's going to be a link in the description below um, where you can get um, $5 off your order with coupon code Derek. It is magicspoon.com slash Derek. And use code Derek to save $5 off your order today. Um, some of the go-to flavors are cocoa, very, very good, um, peanut butter, unreal, frosted, as well as fruity, I mentioned, being identical to the loops essentially. My favorite flavor right now though, as usual, cinnamon. This stuff is absurd. Um, there's some more limited edition flavors. I believe these are long standing flavors now that they're going to be keeping blueberry and maple waffle. These are really good. This is my girlfriend's favorite flavor. Um, gingerbread, I think, is a limited edition one that you can add to your cart at checkout after purchasing something as like an add on item. Um, they might be getting rid of that soon. They have some other limited edition ones like oatmeal cookie and honey gram. I'm waiting for those. I'm excited for those right now. But otherwise, they have. Uh, um, cookies and cream, absurd flavor as well. Uh, maple waffle I mentioned, and the other ones are kind of long-standing ones um, that I would highly recommend. Like these have been the go-tos for a lot of people for a long time because they're that fucking good. Frosted, absurd. So you can check it out. This is something that is uh, my go-to cheat, and I feel like once you give it a shot, um, you might think so as well. You know, for the amount of things it checks off. Like for me, the price too. You know, it's not the cheapest cereal that you're gonna get. Obviously the cheap, super, super tasty junk shit is going to be cheaper ultimately. But for me, the not getting the brain fog and being able to adhere to my normal schedule on a daily basis without feeling like I'm going through a haze of just fucking disability and like, like literally disease states essentially after I ate a junky goddamn giant bowl of Frosted Flakes, like it is, it's night and day worth it in my opinion, even if it is cost prohibitive. Like this is, I used to buy this stuff back in like, I don't know, 
several, I showed my receipts on some of my old integrations where you'd see I was buying it even when I was like poor as fuck. <laughs> like that's, that's how much I value this stuff for my productivity, for entrepreneurship and whatnot. So as well as just like not breaking the bank on my calorie allotment for the day um, and getting my protein in. So again, um, it's very, very good. I would highly recommend it. I've been eating it for years now. Um, and I was stoked when they reached out to sponsor the channel. As you guys have probably noticed, they're one of the only sponsors I have, but they're one of the ones that is featured the most prominently and the most frequently, and that's for a reason. So if you wanna support me, ultimately this company sticks their neck out for me because they believe in what I'm doing, and I use their stuff. I used to pay for it all the time myself um, for my cheat days, like I said, and I feel like you guys would enjoy it too, and it helps support me ultimately when you get it. So if you wanna support the growth of this channel and get some good tasting, macro-friendly protein, friendly, non-brain fog causing cereal. Check it out, link in the description below, magicspoon.com slash Derek. Use coupon code Derek to save $5 off your order today and back to our regularly scheduled programming. So this is an otherwise healthy individual that's gotten in shape before, presumably. Um, and when I say healthy, I mean otherwise capable of being healthy. Like this is a little bit of a self-induced state, I'm sure at the end of the day, having a fucking, I saw the genetic thing they had laid out and I saw MTHFR, like, you have a methylation polymorphism. It does not account for the fact that you are a fucking, you know, BMI of fill in the blank. So anyways, the problem is like here, methylation deficiencies. You think if you're going to add in methyl donors, all of a sudden, you know, the fucking weight falls off? Hormonal imbalances. You think because you produce more estrogen because, because you have so much adipose tissue that it equates to you being like way more, like all of, a, all of this is water weight? Like obviously not, dude. I'm not trying to be mean necessarily, but this is almost misleading to people who are overweight and overcomplicating the fuck out of it. At the end of the day, whoever wrote out his diet plan and exercise regimen and did his initial blood work didn't factor all these things in. This could have been dialed in like the first fucking week with a baseline hormone panel, baseline diet model that assessed your actual energy expenditure and energy intake. Like if it took you 10 weeks to get this figured out where you're still gaining weight and you don't realize that you're eating more than you're expending, like whoever's your trainer or planner or whatever the fuck, like did fail you quite severely. So anyways, going to the most recent update here, we have him at 235 pounds, five days About ago. About to get on the scale. I'm up two pounds. God, that don't make no damn sense, man. Bro, you live with me, man. You see what I'm doing. Okay, what's everything I've been doing? Work out every day, remove sugar, vegan, and keto, cardio within the fat burning range, remove coffee, meditation, lifted weights, blood tests, DNA tests. I'm at a calorie deficit, taking all the vitamins and supplements instructed by the human biologist. Let's see how my sleep was last night. We're at 91, that's the highest I've ever been. It's probably this one. It's not the week I thought I was gonna have. I am tired of gaining. I'm disappointed. I honestly thought this week was going to be the week that everything changed. You had a ton of energy for the most part of this week. Man, we got to figure this out. It's time that we aggressively go after your leptin. We might have found the solution. The doctor said it's where like this hormone is not getting to my brain. That's saying burn fat. And so leptin, if you are leptin resistant, if your leptin signaling is not working correctly, like you're not signaling for satiety properly at the end of the day, ghrelin and leptin are these counter, they're not counteracting necessarily, but they have opposing actions in essence. One is signaling that you are hungry and you wanna eat. Like if you use a ghrelin receptor agonist, like MK677, you could be not hungry or GHRP6. Any of you guys who are into you know PEDs and the peptides would know this. Use MK677 or GHRP6 if you are even like, fucking nauseous in some cases, you can make yourself starving and want to like devastate your fridge. Like that's what ghrelin can do when it's artificially raised. Now if leptin, if you're not responding to leptin, that is your body not signaling that you are satisfied. So what does that equate to? It equates to you deviating from the diet. So if somebody is saying your leptin's all fucked up and dysregulated, he's pretty much like asserting that your satiety signaling is all messed up, which it definitely could be. However, at the end of the day, this is Again, not counting shit properly or having severe hormonal deficiencies, likely the first one, maybe a combination of the two. So he's saying here, check my storage. You'll see my calories burned every day. Do you think those calorie trackers are fucking accurate, bro? I promise you, I promise you they're off. I'm consuming about 2,200 and burning between 2,900 to 3,800 calories per day. I'm publishing my hormone tests on my stories too. For those wondering, I've been vegan, removed all sugars, all processed foods, only drink water, removed caffeine, removed 80% of carbs, including all white carbs. So like, like is removing caffeine gonna help? Like if anything, it would help you be more satiated, 
probably lower your appetite, give you more energy while you're in a deficit. Like there's not, it's not like this is inherently a bad thing that you're removing. The problem is some of this shit that you have in here, some of the vegan food, some of the other stuff. I'm not saying vegan food is necessarily inherently bad, but whatever you're eating, something in there is not counted for properly, bro. The oils you're cooking in, the fucking, like what? I, I don't know, the toppings you're putting on, the supplements you're drinking. A lot of people think, oh, EAAs or BCAAs or my fucking pre-workout has no calories. What do you think amino acids are? They're still fucking nutrients at the end of the day. So like, again, if you're having like all these supplements, all of these things, like, are these all accounted for? Or are you factoring in the fucking like spare 50 calories from your EAAs that you're drinking? Are you factoring in the fucking spare 30 calories of toppings that are on this? Are you factoring in the oils that your thing has been cooked in? Like whatever it is, you think you're consuming 2,200 and you're burning 2,900 to 3,800, but you're not. Like that's the end of story. You know how we know this for sure? Because we can look at a guy who starved himself intentionally for over a year and what happened? He lost all the weight. This is a guy who's morbidly obese. What did he do? He fasted for a year straight and lost 276 pounds. Why did he lose 276 pounds? Because he was expending more than he was eating. At the end of the day, if there's some level of like, is this guy more metabolically flexible and like better than Charlie is necessarily? No, this guy's in way worse shape. This guy's a fucking like way out there, bro. He had to lose 276 pounds to look like a normal person again. And look at his pants. Look at his goddamn pants, bro. Now, how did he achieve this? Simply eating less than he, well, eating nothing. I don't recommend you do this, by the way. This is just the most extreme example. In individuals who think, oh, it's my leptin resistance, it's my hormone dysregulation, it's this, it's that. Like, do you think this guy's dialed in, bro? Do you think getting to this point was a result of dialed in shit and then getting to hear somehow everything miraculously fix itself? All he did was eat less food, you know? Like, I'm not saying that your body composition is going to be ideal at the end of it when you eat the less food if your hormones aren't dialed in and whatnot. Because again, you could end up skinny fat. You can end up whatever. You could have less muscle mass because you're not having enough protein in your diet. You could be not, you know, whatever. There's a million different variables. But ultimately, the end of the fucking equation is this guy ate less than he expended. And that's why he lost weight. It gets really overcomplicated when people get into the genetic, you know, Oh, you have a polymorphism and your fucking MTHFR gene is not expressing correctly. So therefore, because you're not methylating, you're not going to burn the fat. It's like, no, bro. How about you just eat less like or burn more? Like ultimately, the, the meat that is probably not accounted for too properly, like these trackers you're wearing in your fucking arm are not going to be accurate. You have to kind of give yourself some sort of accountability. I'm not saying he's not, by the way. I'm just saying certain things have to be met too from a factoring in the decrease in your what does neat even really stand for at the end of the day i forget what the actual acronym is it's like non-activity non-activity non-exercise activity thermogenesis i believe it was but basically it's the amount of energy you expend just like you know at baseline me fucking sitting here moving my arms around and talking when you start to deprive yourself of calories you find that you stop doing as many movements you're not as fidgety you start to decrease the involuntary movements that you do subconsciously because you have less energy and your body's trying to make up for that disparity. It notices you're depriving itself of food. So it tries to make up for that by like literally depriving you of doing other functions during your day to preserve energy. So even if you're out there during, during bleh, I can't even talk, doing your cardio, doing your weights, if you're not accounting for like your step count overall and things of this nature, you could get into a situation where your neat is fucked up to a point where you were not burning as much just sitting around as you would have otherwise if you had more energy in your system. And that's not an excuse to eat more. It's just something to account for when you factor in even walking amounts um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Like is your step, are you getting your 10,000 steps a day? Are you doing, I'm sure he's adhering to the plan. I think the diet and everything is just not dialed in to be honest. I think the amount of shit he had on his table, it looked like he got in touch with a some medical oversight that prescribed him a fuck ton of stuff from a compounding pharmacy. Um, I could be wrong on that, but in the middle of this, I saw like a table full of what appeared to be pharmaceutical bottles from a compounding pharmacy. So presumably somebody has connected him and got him, you know, dialed in with whatever he needed from a thyroid perspective from me. And now again, I'm sure if I actually looked at his stories, I would have better insight into it because he is more meticulously logging it. It's just unfortunate that it's on stories that delete themselves. Um, but here he, he's tracking like, you know, pretty meticulously, um, he's getting his fucking vitamin D, his sleep metrics, blah, blah, blah. 
Like these are all pharmaceutical bottles, bro. I can't see what these are exactly, but I would not be surprised if somebody was like, you know, addressing all angles. It looks pretty. Somebody's trying to get them hormonally in check. Now the diet though, is the diet in check? No, it's physically impossible to not lose weight if you fucking don't eat. Like that's just the end of the day. It's physically impossible to not lose weight if you don't eat. And I'm not asserting that he should not eat, but at the end of the day, if this guy can prove you can lose this much weight by simply not eating, like there's some level at which you lose weight. The amount of energy you deprive yourself of expending from your like lack of activity or lack of, you know, neat, the you know disparity in your neat after you decrease calorie intake and whatnot, and you get more tired and whatnot. This can all be accounted for at the end of the day. And you just need to eat less and expend more because ultimately that's not cutting it right now. Like something in your diet is too calorie dense or something in your energy expenditure is being overly inflated in your count. That's just what it boils down to. That's just what it boils down to, dude. I like to use this example though, because it's the most extreme example of there's some level of you think you're doing everything right, but you're not. Like at the end of the day, this guy went to the extreme and it's impossible to not lose weight when you're eating less than you're expending. That's just how it works. So a lot of thermodynamics essentially rules at the end of the day. The fact that this guy is even functioning on a day-to-day -day basis means he is like utilizing fucking substrate to fuel activities. And that substrate either isn't in excess at maintenance or in a deficit. And if you're not in a deficit, you're gonna lose weight. If it's in a surplus, you're gonna gain weight. That's just how it is. So, and yeah, that number is going to be drastically different potentially based on your muscle mass, how much energy you expand, blah, blah, blah. There's some people who stay shredded eating like fucking 3,500 plus calories, but they do a shit ton of cardio and do other stuff and have a ton of muscle and take performance enhancing drugs or whatever. For other people though, I'm not saying you ever need to get to this extreme, but there's some level of calorie deprivation that gets you to lose weight in every circumstance. So the answer is not don't eat food, but the fact that you are still talking to scientists and shit about this stuff, like, dude, it's just the intake at the end of the day relative to the expenditure. And that's all it boils down to. Like bare bones, the fucking diet, get rid of all the sauces, all the toppings, all the special cooking ways you do it. And just like go from bare bones approach where you can meticulously count every goddamn calorie that goes into your mouth. Everything, you know, you look an ass. I want you to fucking count it, bro. That's it. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you guys found that informative, interesting, educational, whatever. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. If you want a comprehensive lab test, go to MerrickHealth.com. You can choose... Uh, male or female panel, depending on if you're a man or a woman. And from there, we have pre-designed lab panels that I have vetted and audited myself that have high sensitivity lab work, as well as vital markers that are overlooked by people who aren't staying on top of the cutting edge literature, um, LP little a, alpha fetal protein, things that will indicate um, levels of cardiovascular disease risk, uh, potential for cancer development, a lot of different things that go overlooked in addition, actually getting accurate assessment of your thyroid values, getting high sensitivity blood work of your hormones, not using shitty amino acids for testing your estradiol levels. Like there's a lot of things that go overlooked um, in standard labs that we have dialed in based on um, all of my research on this shit. So if you want to get a comprehensive package that is pre-designed by me and my team, you can check it out here, or you can use our cost-efficient single biomarker self-service labs checkout section here where you can literally type in anything you want and you can add it to your cart separately and make your own panel. Like I don't know of any company that's doing it to the flexibility we are with the cost efficiency that we are too. Like getting your, you can literally choose here like a fucking liquid chromatography, the tandem mass spectrometry, total T without having to add like 40 other things at the same time. Cause usually these things come in pre-designed bundles where they don't let you just add separate shit like this. So anyway, that's it. You can check it out, MerrickHealth.com and anything else I'm associated with. It's all in the video description below. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, MerrickHealth.com, follow my Instagram, I'm MerrickHealth.com, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, and now I actually on BitChute. That's just part of my fucking outro at this point, I guess. Talk to you guys soon.